guys and welcome back to this week's video. So before we start, I just want to give a little disclaimer that I will be showing post-mortem photos in this video. There's only like one or two. So if this makes you uncomfortable, maybe just don't watch this video and subscribe so you see next week's video. So today we're going to be talking about the boy in the box. On the 25th of February, 1957, in Philadelphia, a young man by the name of Frederick Benesis discovered a, what he thought to believe was a young boy's body wrapped in a flannel blanket, laying in a box. But this wasn't the first discovery of the body. A few days prior, there was another young boy checking his traps in the area, um, and he later said to police that he didn't report the body straight away when he saw it because the traps that he was checking and the traps he was using in the area were actually illegal at the time. When police arrived and looked over the body, the boy was believed to be between the ages of four to six years old. He was lying naked face up in a JC Penney's box, which when purchased contained a bassinet. His body was dry and clean and his arms were crossed nicely over his stomach. His nails had all been recently trimmed and cleaned very neatly and his hair had been cut most likely after he had died because there was clumps of his hair found all over his body. There was bruises all over his body, mainly on his facial area though, um, and I believe on the back of his neck. He did have two surgical scars, one on his chest and one near his groin, and they had both healed fine so they were done a while prior and according to the medical examiner the boy was very malnourished but he had eaten at least two to three hours prior to his death his feet and his right hand were wrinkled um, indicating that his hand and his feet had been submerged in some body of water for a period of time either just before he died or just after he died. The cause of death was believed to be multiple blows to the back of the head, um, but as it was very cold in Philadelphia this time of year, the medical examiner couldn't actually pinpoint a time of death, so they came up with a rough estimate of two to three days before his body was found, up to two to three weeks, which is a pretty big gap. They put posters up everywhere with this boy's face on it, um, hoping that someone would come forward and realise that this was their missing child or that they knew something or they'd seen this child or something, but nobody did. The police even went to a drastic matter of actually taking the boy's body and dressing him up and sitting him up and propping him. I'll put a photo in um, just to hopefully that someone would recognize him if it wasn't just a post-mortem photo. But again, nothing came of this. In 1960, an investigator by the name of, of Remington Bristow was conducting his own investigation on the boy. He focused most of his attention on a foster home that was only 1.5 miles from where the boy's body was found. And this was after a psychic had told him that she believed him to be in a big house, um, possibly a foster house, and she was pretty sure that this is where the boy came from. A year later, in 1961, the family that run this foster home uh, decided to move and they had an estate sale. So Bristow went to the estate sale and realized that there was quite a few items in the house that seemed a bit strange and that could be related to the case. There was a bassinet in the basement of the home, uh, which was covered in dust, and it matched what would have been in the box originally uh, perfectly. There were flannel blankets hanging on the clothesline outside, which also were the exact same as the flannel blanket that was found with the boy. And all the blankets were cut in half to make them fit the beds that the other children slept on. And also there was a duck pond that was located on the property, um, which Bristow possibly thought that the boy's hand and feet were submerged in at some point, um, whether he'd like fallen and was laying there for a while or got into an argument with the other boys. I don't know. And I don't think of anything ever become of the whole duck pond being involved in the case or not. So Bristow come up with his thought um, and theory on what might have happened. 
The man running the foster home, Arthur Nicoletti. I keep hearing noises in my house, so that's creeping me out. And there's no one home. Okay, back to the story. Yeah, he had a stepdaughter, Anna Marie, who had four children out of wedlock, three of which were stillborn, and one which was electrocuted at three years old. Um, but I'm pretty sure I read that it was an accident on a theme park ride or a um, carnival ride or something like that. So they thought possibly that the boy was hers and that because it was out of wedlock, um, they would just get rid of him. But I don't really understand this theory because if, because he was out of wedlock, they wanted to get rid of him. Why wouldn't they have done it at birth instead of, you know, four to six years later? This was later ruled out because they'd taken DNA from the boy and um, DNA from Anna Marie and it wasn't a match. So she wasn't the mother. The next theory is that he is the son of Kenneth and Irene Dudley. An investigation into their family was started in 1961 after one of their 10 children was found dead and cause of death was malnutrition and neglect. They had just wrapped her up in a blanket and dumped her in the woods instead of burying her or having an actual funeral for her. Later on, authorities then realized that seven out of 10 of their children had all died from the exact same thing, malnutrition and neglect. And none of them had had... Okay, that's creepy. Um, none of them had had a proper burial. They'd all just been dumped. But still, after all this, the boy in the box still remained unknown. There was no link that he belonged to this family at all. So in 2002, a woman that went by the name M had come forward to police and told them that when she was younger, her mother used to abuse her mentally, physically, sexually. And one day she purchased a boy from his parents in 1954. And they knew him by the name of Jonathan. So she said that her mother kept him in the basement and he had to sleep in a fridge and that she would regularly abuse him. Now this all could explain a lot of things, but then she told police that one night they were eating baked beans for dinner and the boy started to get sick. Apparently Em's mum got very upset with this and angry about this and started to bash the boy against the floor several times until he was unconscious. And then Em claims that they took him up and gave him a bath and during this bath is when he passed away. So they cut his long hair which identified him sort of thing that made him unique. Um, he had apparently he had very long beautiful hair which would explain the lumps of hair on his body. Um, and then they got in a car and they drove out and they left him there for someone to find. Now police couldn't believe this story as something that they hadn't released to the media was that the coroner or the medical examiner found in his stomach baked beans. But I'm not entirely sure about this one. Some places I read that he hadn't eaten in hours before he had died and then other places I read that he had eaten a few hours before he died um, but I'm leaning more towards that yes he had eaten because more sources said that he had than he hadn't. Policemen spoke to neighbours around M's house. Neighbours went to the house frequently and that M shouldn't be taken seriously because she had a, um, she had a past of mental illness and that anything she said you couldn't really believe. Another theory is that the boy was raised as a girl. He had long hair which a sketch was made to show what he would look like with long hair. And they figured out the length of what his hair would have been from the hair that was found on his body. Um, they just kind of like put it together I guess and came up with the length that it would be. His eyebrows were also shaped and tweezed to make them look more feminine. And like I said earlier, he also had some sort of surgery done to his groin area. I couldn't find what that surgery was or if it was even done by a medical examiner. Um, but if you do go through and read the stories about this and the theories and the investigation side of it, um, they do say that there's no hospital records or doctor's records or anything, nothing that matched his fingerprints or anything like that. 
He since has been buried in a grave under America's Unknown Child, dedicated November the 11th, 1998. And this was his second burial place. Uh, he was buried first and then they brought him up, I think, to get more DNA from him or to see what kind of DNA they could get from him. And then they reburied him. And still to this day, they are trying to figure out who this boy is. So that's all That's all we have for this one. So if you know of anyone that lived in this area around this time, maybe it's worth asking them if they know anything about this story. Um, it is a very popular story though. So I'm sure, I hope that if anyone... I keep hearing noises. Okay. Um, I'm sure if anyone did know about this, I would hope that they had come forward. But obviously there is someone out there that knows, that put that body there and they know about this boy and they know who this boy is. But let me know in the comments down below what your theories are and what you think about the whole thing. Do some research on it yourself because there is so many more theories out there. So much more um, kind of investigations into it and tips and things like that um, that all just came up pretty much a dead end. They are interesting to read and go through. I will link down below the, there's actually a website dedicated to this whole case. Uh, and so yeah, I'll link that down below and you can go check it out for yourself. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next week with a new video. Little darling, oh, 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 oh